Well, welcome to the Good Old Days of Radio Show. It is Tuesday, November 28th. Thanksgiving has passed. Hope you all had a good one and a nice time off with your family. And now everybody's gearing up. Uh, I guess Black Friday or whatever was yesterday, but it, not Black. Couldn't be Black Friday. Yesterday was Monday. Okay, Cyber Monday, whatever they want to call it. Um, anyway, shopping time, uh, and also Christmas time. So we're going to start our Christmas salute at the end of November with an episode of Fibber McGee and Molly. Uh, it's their Christmas show from December twenty third, nineteen forty seven. Fibber and Molly is one of those shows that is remembered very fondly by a number of people, and some of them are quite good, but uh, there also tends to be so many of them that you get a little bogged down in trying to <laughs> follow through all the episodes that exist, but uh, it, the good ones are quite quite, quite well done. Uh, the Christmas show usually features a segment at the end of the show with Teeny, voiced by Marion Jordan, who was playing Molly. She also did the little kid Teeny voice. And usually there's a segment at the end of the show where Teeny uh, is read the night before Christmas story. So I, I assume that's the case here, but we'll find out when we listen to it. So here we go. The Johnson's Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> The makers of Johnson's Wax Products for Home and Industry present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the Kingsmen and Billy Mills Orchestra. You know, it's a beautiful sight to sit in a room and see the red and green lights of a Christmas tree reflected softly in the luster of well-polished furniture. It makes the room warmer and richer somehow. Well, now your furniture will have the kind of luster that reflects the holiday lights if you polish it with Johnson's Cream Wax. You just rub on a little cream wax, let it dry a second or two, and then polish lightly. The surface will actually glow. Dust and dirt won't stick to your furniture or light-colored woodwork, for there's not one single drop of oil in Johnson's Cream Wax. Once polished, all that's necessary to keep that wonderful glow is an occasional light dusting. Clean and polish your furniture in one easy operation with Johnson's Cream Wax. Then sit back and look at the warm reflection of those Christmas tree lights in every shining surface. Use Johnson's Cream Wax to bring out the beauty of the home. Look on the bright side, shine up the right side, bring out the beauty of the home. One reason things always look brighter in the morning than they did the night before is that it isn't so dark in the daytime. But a little tough luck that Mr. McGee of 79 Wistful Vista had last night was not helped a bit by eight hours sleep. Listen to himself this morning as we join... Fibber McGee and Molly. No more breakfast for me, kiddo. I got to get going. Not even another cup of coffee? No. Why, you haven't had fewer than three cups of coffee for breakfast since the Big Taft ran for president. <laughs> I can't help it, Snooky. I got to backtrack myself to the Elks Club and look for my key ring. I lost it on my way home last night. Why didn't you stop and look for it then? Because it was blacker than the inside of a buffalo. The moon was behind clouds, the street lights were behind telephone poles, and I was behind $2.40 playing snooker, and I wanted to get home. Your key ring? Why, McGee, the key to the hall closet was on your key ring, and all our Christmas presents are locked in the hall closet. I know it, but don't you worry now. I'll find them. I'll just walk back the way I came. Down to Oak Street, over to 14th. McGee? Huh? Have you looked out the window this morning? No, no. You know I can't stand the sight of daylight till after I've had my coffee. Yes, I know. I sent Maxwell House a Christmas card in Kara Burns and Allen. Good. But uh, take a peek out the window, sweetheart. I haven't got time, baby. I got to look for my key ring, so... Oh, my gosh. Snow. <laughs> Three feet of it. It just stopped snowing a little while ago. Isn't it Beautiful? Beautiful. With my key ring, with the key to the hall closet, with all our Christmas presents locked in it, buried under it? Why, it's horrible. 
Well, I got to get going anyway. Dad, Brad, where's my overcoat? Where's my mitten? See if you can find my overshoes. Where's what are you going to do? Your key ring is under three feet of snow. I'll find it if it's under 44 feet of French fried frog legs. <laughs> I'll shovel the sidewalk clean clear down to the Elks Club. Or clear clean down to the Elks Club, as the case may be. Now, I'll find the dad. I hope that's Foggy Williams, the weatherman. And if it is, kiddo, you'd better leave the room. I, could have, I got a few choice remarks to make this. Now, day. now, now, the weatherman can't help it if it snows. Now, he can predict it, can't he? So people will be prepared and not go losing their key rings the night before. But, darling, he did predict Well, it. who believes him? <laughs> My gosh, if I ever thought it was... Come in. Hi, Miss McGee. Hi, Miss McGee. Oh. Gee, isn't this wonderful? Four feet of snow. Three feet. Well, I bet you it would be up to my hips on you, I bet you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, can us kids ever have fun now, though, ever? Ah, fun, Pata. Well, Teeny, it's nice to see you. Hand me my sweater, will you, Molly? Thanks, thanks. Now, where's my muffler? Gee, don't Mr. McGee like snow, Miss McGee? Don't you, Mr. McGee? Hmm, don't you? Hmm? <laughs> Look, sis, snow is beautiful. In a photograph of Mount Whitney taken from 45 miles away. <laughs> it's beautiful to a grizzly bear that's been Hibernian for the winter in a cave somewhere. <laughs> but underfoot and down your neck and up your sleeve, you can have it. Where's my overshoes? Hey, Mr. McGee, if you're going past my house, come on in because we got a surprise for you. The kids and me. <laughs> you know, Johnny and Kenny and Buddy and Ratty are practicing our Christmas carol. Yeah, look, and... look, look, look Teeny. Mm -hmm. Some other time, I'd love to stand around in my overshoes and hear the exciting news about you and Kenny and Ratty and all them other... Buddy little... and Johnny. Yeah, but I got to work today. <laughs> so if you'll excuse me, I got to go shovel some snow. Oh, my daddy can't shovel snow. Hmm? He's got his arm in a cast. He cut himself shaving. <laughs> he, uh, he cut himself shaving and got his arm in a cast? Sure. He said he was eating popcorn at the time and the bag fell down over his eye. Now, wait a minute, sis. He was eating popcorn at the time and yeah, the... Yeah, but he says it wouldn't happen again in a million years because he don't care how vicious a dog is, he can make friends with it, rain or shine. Well, what that got... Well, stop at my house if you can, mister. I know you'll like the surprise we got for you. So long, Miss McGee. Bye, Timmy. If I walk kind of lopsided, kiddo, it's because I think I just had my leg pulled. <laughs> well, here I go, Tootsie. I think you were a little rude to Teeny McGee. My goodness, snow is just what children love at Christmas time, and she was so happy at having this surprise for you. Surprise my clavicle. <laughs> Hearing her and them other kids sing Christmas carols is about as much of a surprise as waking up on New Year's Day to find out it's January. Now, let me see. Have I forgot anything? Well, I don't think so. You have your overshoes. Yeah. Three sweaters, overcoat, mittens, your hat with the earmuffs. Huh? Your hat with the earmuffs. I can't hear you. Earmuffs! Wait a minute, I can't hear anything with these dad ratted earmuffs on. <laughs> what did you say? I merely said... Oh, clang, clang, clang. I never saw it to fail. The minute I get busy or want to go someplace, that dad ratted doorbell starts ringing like there was a fire on the waterfront. Come in. Well, my goodness, Dr. Gamble with snow on his eyebrows. Come on in out of the cold, doctor. Thank you, my dear. And what are you all bundled up for, wet wash? <laughs> you look like a sail going somewhere to rummage. <laughs> you hate to see me dressed up warm, eh, Greedy? Need a few pneumonia cases to pay off your Christmas bills, eh? <laughs> Lumpy, when I start picking patients in advance, they'll have better credit ratings than yours. <laughs> And I would like to add that as a judge of character, you will never be re-elected. Well, to answer your question, Doctor, he's going out for, uh, to look for his key ring. He lost it somewhere between here and the Elks Club last night. A splendid project. Betcha. Do all that work just to recover a dime store key ring with six keys, three of them unidentified, a bottle opener, a lucky rabbit's foot, which doesn't seem to have done him any good, and an identification tag which says, please return to Fibber McGee, 79 Wistful Vista, no reward. <laughs> However, good luck with it, Lemonhead So long, my dear
That big old fraud with the little black bag wouldn't be so quippy if he knew that key ring held the key to the hall closet and all our presents were in there, including the one we're giving him. Hey, I better get going. I gotta find that key Say, ring. Say, couldn't Mark. we just get a locksmith to open the door for us? Nope, all closed, holidays. Take the hinges off the door. I thought of that. With our hall closet, it's too dangerous. <laughs> you gotta have the key. It's gotta be so you can twist the key, turn the knob, and leap back. <laughs> well, here I go, kiddo. Into the wild white yonder. My hero. <laughs> Billy Mills in the orchestra and March of the Toys. See how anything so light could get so heavy so fast. <laughs> I gotta find those dad rather keys pretty quick. It'll soon be dark. Oh, McGee, I brought you another thermos of hot coffee. How are you getting along, dearie? Terrible. I've been shoveling this dad rather stuff all day, and I can still see our house. <laughs> Give me the coffee, will you? Careful now, it's pretty hot. As cold as I am, I can't even tell if it's scalding. Boy, I could go for a hot buttered root beer right now. <laughs> Oh, look, McGee, look who's coming, the weatherman. Yeah, walking around gloating, is he? If this is his idea of a practice... Hello, Mr. Williams. Hi, Foggy. Well, Mr. and Mrs. McGee, I'm glad to see you. Have a cigar, Mr. McGee? A cigar? Why, why, why thanks, Foggy. <laughs> Celebrating something? <laughs> Can't you guess? You don't mean... Ho, ho, ho. Why, Mr. Williams, have you and Mrs. Williams no, had... No, 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 Mrs. Williams had nothing to do with this. Huh? This is my own snowstorm. <laughs> I predicted it all by myself. <laughs> Predicting weather must be fascinating work, Mr. Williams. No, thank you. I don't smoke cigars. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Yes, I had rather an interesting time out west last summer, experimenting with making weather. Well, if you can unmake it, boy, you and me have got a deal cooking. <laughs> What'd you do, Mr. Williams? Move in with an Navajo so you could whip up some Indian summers? <laughs> no. No. I, I rented a plane, took it up 8,000 feet over a dusty ranch, and dropped 50 pounds of ice into a cloud. Then I landed to see what had happened. And what had happened, kiddo? I had killed a cow. Heavenly days, how unfortunate. Oh, it really was. The rancher was standing there, and he said if the ice had landed three feet to the left, it would have killed his son-in-law. What was so unfortunate about that? 
Well, the son-in-law was a worthless lad, but the cow was valued at $600. (laughs) Well, I must get down to the office. My assistant is watching the instruments down there, and he just called to report a rise in temperature and a warm front. Oh, just what does that mean, Mr. Williams? It means he should turn around and stand with his back to the fire for a while. (laughs) Well, Merry Christmas to both of you. Uh, Same to you, you, Mr. Williams. Back to work, peasant. Quit leaning on that shovel like you were getting paid by the hour. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What is it, McGee? Did you find the key ring? I don't know. There's something here, all right. Close to the sidewalk. Wait till I chip it loose. Ow! What was it? That's all my overshoe. <laughs> Doggone it. I'm getting tired of this. Don't let me carry keys anymore, Molly. I can't be trusted well, to carry... Well, now, we've tried it that way, too, remember? Hmm? You came home without your front door key the night I was out playing bridge. Yeah? You broke the big window, knocked over the floor lamp, put your foot in the goldfish bowl, grabbed the drapes to keep from falling, fell anyhow, hit the end table, rolled in the hall, and found the front door unlocked the way I left it for you. (laughs) Yeah, but I was only trying to... Hello there, Molly. Hiya, pal. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Pull up a snowbank and sit down. (laughs) Hi, Junior. Oh, boy, what a day this is. This really feels like Christmas. I love a good... Hey, wait a minute. Aren't you a little lost, pal? Your house is down the street there. I know that, Junior. Relax. I lost my key ring last night coming home from the Elks. It snowed all over it, so I'm looking for it with the snow snow. Oh, I see. Yeah. Any further questions? One. One more question. Why didn't you clean off your own sidewalk? Yours is the only house on the block with snow in front of it. I looked on our sidewalk last night, and the keys are not there. There's no use shoveling through a lot of snow that I know my keys and ring isn't under. There's plenty between here and the Elks that I don't know where the my keys are. You know, he's always very efficient, Mr. Wilcox. Well, I'd like to stay and help you, pal, but I'm busy just walking around getting that old Christmas spirit today. Gee, I love this time of year. Oh, me too, Mr. Wilcox. Everybody's sending cards and buying presents. And locking them in hall closets. Christmas trees all lighted up, wreaths in all the windows. Snow all over my keys. Ah, you know, to me, Christmas and New Year's Day are real Johnson's Wax holidays. To you, Mr. Wilcox, so are Columbus Day, Easter, and the annual convention of the Daughters of Notary Publics of Western Florida. (laughs) Also Navy Day in the Kentucky Derby. No, no, no. I mean that with the kids home from school, relatives and friends dropping in the house, the spirit of hospitality is really at its peak at this time of the year. There's a hand clasp at the door, a smile on the face, and a glistening, gleaming welcome from even the floors and furniture. Ah. You know what I mean? Well, if we don't, we've wasted a good 13 years. <laughs> Look. Look, Waxy. Yes, pal? Go cringle your Chris someplace else, will you? I got work. I may have to shovel my way clean to the Elks. I got no time to stand here in barbershop with you. I give you two parting words. I know. Go home. No. Merry Christmas. Well, thank you, pal. And the same to both of you. Goodbye, Mr. Wilcox. Too bad we don't have another shovel or I could help you out a little. Well, now, you can just use this one a while, Tootsie. It's a nice light shovel. I mean, I know you wouldn't want the neighbors to see your wife doing manual labor like that right out on the street, of course. Otherwise, And what business is it of theirs? I'd like to know. If my wife wants to help me out when she sees I'm breaking my back trying to give us a nice... Oh, 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 oh. Here comes that kid down the street again. Oh, teeny. Yeah, I better get busy. She'll start giving me that pitch about Kenny and Rally and Buddy and... Hi, I'm very busy right now, Teeny. Hello, Teeny. You having fun? Sure. Me and Kenny and Buddy and Ratty and Johnny have been practicing our Christmas carols. And Mr. McGee... What you want? This is if I didn't know. My house is just right down there, and if you just stop in a little while, we got a surprise for you, I bet you. I'm in no mood for surprises now. Best surprise you can give me right now is go on home. Yeah, but... Gee, mister, don't you like little children? <laughs> Certainly I like little children. Don't you like old men? <laughs> sure. Well, okay then. So long, Miss McGee. Hey, kids, not yet, he said. Oh, I'm kids. Breaking my back, shoveling snow. Why don't you let the children sing for you and get it over with, McGee? You ought to sit down and rest a while anyhow. You know why I don't let them sing for me, Molly. My gosh, when I hear a bunch of grubby little kids like that singing Christmas carols all off key with their smeary little pusses lit up like an Easter sunrise, I get all mushy. And start forgiving everybody for everything they ever done to me. 
And it's very embarrassing because sometimes I can't even remember what I was sore at him about. <laughs> he was, I got to protect jingle myself. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle. All the hello there, kids. <laughs> Heavenly days, the old timer. Hi, old timer. What brings you out in this kind of weather? My flexible flyer, Johnny. <laughs> what do you think? I'm pulling behind me a bulldozer? My goodness, this sled. Isn't it awfully cold for you, Mr. Old Timer? Not if I keep moving, daughter. Me and some of the other kids, the younger crowd, <laughs> are going out to Dugan's Hill to do some belly <laughs> <laughs> stomach busters. Yeah, I know, buckle bruisers. Yeah. Want to come along, Johnny? I'll share my sled with you. I'll use it going down, and you can use it coming up. <laughs> fifty, fifty. No. no, I got work to do. Yes, he's going to shovel snow all the way down to the Elks Club, it looks like. <laughs> Is that so? Well, different people like different things. Me, I like coasting. I'm going to try to bust my own record for the bobsled run at Dugan's Hill. Your own record? Said it last year, daughter. Went down that run in 13 seconds. Well, that's half a mile. In 13 seconds? Yep. May take a little longer with a sled, of course. <laughs> hey, Skinny, ain't wait for me. Got to hook a truck. Can't see you later, man. <laughs> Dearie, let's go home. You're worn out and it's too dark to see anymore anyhow. I guess so. What a break. All our Christmas presents locked in the hall closet and no key. How do I get into these messes anyhow? Well, I don't know, but you do it so easily, dearie. <laughs> Come on, let's go home. Okay, I'm wore out. I'm beat like the seat of a jockey's pants. I'm as bushed as the left-hand Smith brother. <laughs> I know, dearie. I'm sorry. Here, now, let me carry Mr. Williams' snow shovel a while. Oh, I'll throw it in a snowdrift. My gosh, what kind of a cheap snow scoop is that anyhow? Can't even find a ring of keys with a cheap thing. Well, who, 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 who's that crossing the street? Oh. Why, McKee, I believe it's Mr. Wimple. Yeah, Wallace Wimple. Hi, Wimp. Hello, Mr. Wimple. Hello, folks. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to see you again, Wimp. Yes, are you looking forward to a nice Christmas, Mr. Wimple? Oh, yes. Yeah. I had a wonderful time last night, too, Mrs. McGee. Sweetie Face, that's my big old wife. Yeah. <laughs> Sweetie Face helped out at the kindergarten Christmas party, and I went along. Oh, sounds big time, all right. Yes. She got all dressed up as Santa Claus and came down the big brick chimney for the kitty. Oh, Isn't that nice? Down there. Yes. <laughs> Somebody lit the most beautiful fire in the fireplace. <laughs> Just that she was halfway down. Oh, did she get hot about that? <laughs> Build a fire while she was in the chimney. Gee, what happened, Wimp? Oh, the kitties loved it. They did? They'd never seen a Santa Claus with a pack of toys come through the side of a chimney before. <laughs> <laughs> Bricks all over the place. <laughs> well, I'll leave you here. You're home. Merry Christmas. Same Merry you. Christmas, Mr. Wimp. One nice thing about seeing Wimp with all the grief that poor guy has, I forget my own troubles. What was I worrying about? Oh, yeah, my key ring and all the keys. Hi, Miss McGee. Hi, Mr. McGee. Oh. Welcome oh, home. Awesome. What are you kids doing on our front porch? Don't you know you'll catch cold out here? Now, McGee, don't be cross with the children. It's almost Christmas Eve. Well, gee whiz, can't they take a hint? They'll have to come in the house now. Can't have them catch cold out here. You see, kids, see, I told you he would. Come on in, children. Close the door. Yeah, close the door. Come on in, children. Close the door. <laughs> You wouldn't come to my house, Mr. McGee, so I brought Kenny and Buddy and Johnny and Ratty over here with the surprise. Yeah, 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 sure, mm -hmm. surprise. Okay, get it over with. Sing it. Well, Kenny and Ratty and Buddy and Johnny and I were practicing our Christmas carols last night, and right in front of our house we found these keys. Yeah, okay. Sing it in any old key I don't... <laughs> <laughs> keys? Sure. It says Fibber McGee and no reward on him, and you're the only Fibber. Oh, my keys. <laughs> and after me shoveling snow all day long to... Oh, Teeny, why didn't you tell me you found my keys? You didn't give me a chance, mister. All day long I tried to tell you. Oh, I see what you mean. Well, I'm sorry I was such a melon head about it, sis, but... You know me, I'm, I'm apt to be a little grouchier than usual around Christmas time. Gee, why, Mr. McGee? Most people are a lot more cheerful, I bet you. Yeah, but I... Well, I can explain that, Teeny. You see, he's very sentimental. He's got to act a little tough or he goes all to pieces. Now, you take a Christmas carol, for instance. Can you take a Christmas carol, dearie? Huh? Oh, I love him. But, but, but I, I don't want people to know it. They might take advantage of me. Go ahead, sis, sing me a carol. 
But don't anybody ask me to sign my life insurance over to him right afterwards because I'll do it. Oh. <laughs> okay. Come on, Reddy and Kenny and Johnny and Buddy. A one and a two and a three. <laughs>
peasants are scattered and broken. St. Nicholas won't come again for a year. The children are nestled all warm in their wee little beds. While memories of sugar plums dance in their wee This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Uh, all right, February and Molly, Christmas, 1947. And yes, it had the whole thing with Teeny at the end of that. That's Molly McGee or um, Marion Jordan doing the voice of Teeny. They actually issued that whole Christmas skit um, as a 78 RPM album back then so people could buy it. It was very, very popular with the public, and they sold quite a number of them as uh, 78 RPM albums. Because um, back then you couldn't just get a radio show. You could if you spent money and had um, fancy recording equipment at home. You could record shows off the air, but most people didn't have the money or the expertise to do that. And so if you wanted to... Uh, preserve and hear some of these programs over and over again, there was not an easy way to do it. You could order air checks from a recording company. That was usually expensive because the blanks alone to make the recordings were about $5 each. And $5 in 1947 was a lot of money for somebody to spend for a blank uh, to make a recording on. So anyway, little, little trivia facts here as to why some of these uh, radio programs do not survive is because they didn't make recordings of everything. They did a lot of them, but a lot of them got thrown out over the years too because everybody thought no one would care. But you care. You care in 2023 because you're listening to the Good Old Days Radio Show podcast. So you must care. Um, and we can be grateful for the things that have survived and um, wistfully nostalgic about the things that do not survive and continue to look for them because there are some of those things still out there hidden in basements and garages and whatever, and we just need to find them. They turn up every once in a while, and sometimes on this show we present to you things that have never been heard before. Usually not, but sometimes. So anyway, all right, that was our first salute to Christmas for this year. We will be back on Thursday. No Christmas on Thursday. We have um, the uh, next to the last edition of our Radio Noir series, an episode of Suspense called Crossfire, and I'll explain all about that one on Thursday. And then back on Tuesday with more uh, Christmas-related shows. Okay, John Tefteller in the good old days of radio show saying, and I'll say this again, if you are on YouTube and you watch this or listen to this on YouTube, subscribe, please. Thank you.